call to member for Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And Deputy Speaker, uh, it's a great privilege to be able to rise and uh, support the motion put forward by the member for Leichhardt uh, and to support in his endeavours and his long-standing pursuit in uh, the eradication of uh, TB and uh, new infections and to make sure that uh, we can live in a world free of TB. And I say that as the parliamentary friends of HIV and that we share similar goals and similar ambitions about the type of work that we want to do to make sure that we can live in a healthier and more sustainable world. And of course, TB is not a particularly big challenge in Australia, partly because of the effort and the initiatives that we have taken as a nation uh, in the past. Uh, while we've had, um, we do have infections from time to time, we have one of the lowest rates anywhere in the world of approximately five to six cases per 100,000 people. And that's a record that comes as a consequence of uh, in, uh, it's diligence and focus. Each year, approximately 1,300 new cases of TB are diagnosed in Australia and they're, born, uh, they're diagnosed with people who are born overseas and with nearly half of these cases being diagnosed within four years of arrival in Australia. So diligence has an effect and makes sure that our population uh, is healthy and well and where there is a challenge we can make sure we can assist and make sure that people get the remedy that they need. But of course globally that is not so much the case. Tuberculosis is now the world's leading infectious disease killer, killing around 1.6 million people per year. And of course that has a huge detrimental impact on many countries, particularly those uh, of developing nature uh, that need assistance and support of healthy populations so that they can grow, so they can succeed as countries, so they can provide economic opportunities for their populations to get ahead. And of course our region, just outside of our borders, is one of those most heavily impacted. The WHO estimates that in 2018 approximately 62% of the world's new cases occur in the Indo-Pacific region, or 6 million cases. And 12 countries in the Indo-Pacific region are included in the WHO's top 30 list of high burden TB countries. So while we're very fortunate not to have a big challenge domestically, the challenge we face on our doorstep is incredibly real and undermines the opportunity of those countries to get ahead. That's why it should be core and front and focus uh, as part of our, uh, our uh, aid and uh, international assistance effort across the region to make sure that we're putting countries in the best position uh, to get ahead and provide assistance. And of course, those who are most impacted are those who have multi-drug resistance uh, TB, and uh, those rates sadly are rising rapidly. And those become a problem not just because of the volume uh, of cases, but because of the costs that are incurred and the assistance required, which is often quite difficult for people who uh, are living in uh, less developed countries than ours and often rely on regional um, or remote health services to get their assistance and support to make sure that they're taking uh, the appropriate line of uh, remedies and uh, drugs to make sure they're in the best position to be able to uh, uh, not succumb to the ultimate consequences of TB. Um, and that's why Australia has very much worked with Papua New Guinea in particular to address the situation. Since 2012, approximately 60 million has been provided for TB control and assistance in PNG. And that's uh, dramatically improved TB treatment outcomes with 99% of people uh, in the Western provinces of PNG now completing their treatment, which is up from 65% in 2014. Of course, helping to reduce the infection rates and the emergence of drug resistant strains. We don't just take a role in our local region, we also do it internationally and we work multilaterally through particularly the Global Fund to fight AIDS, TB and malaria, which has delivered TB treatment to 42,000 people in 14 Pacific Island nations. And that's with a pledge of $220 million to support that important cause. Australia's Health Security Initiative for the Indo-Pacific Region, which was launched in October 2017, also provides $300 million in funding over five years the prevention and contaminant of infectious diseases in the region and beyond. Now, as part of this commitment, 49.3 million is currently being invested in activities relating to TB research, prevention and treatment. Now, Deputy Speaker, these are just numbers. And of course, sitting behind each one of those numbers is a human story of somebody who wants to realise their ambition and their dream. And the focus we put on uh, honouring uh, World TB Day today is not just to talk about those dollars and cents, 
but it's to celebrate the realised potential of what we can unleash when we give people the opportunity to live their full lives. Uh, thank you.